Hey y'all, I'm Katrina. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I think it's apropos that my first tag would be the Shaded Choice Award tag. It is created by three black booktubers. Uh, when I saw Princess from Castle Library talk about it, I was very excited about it. I immediately went to the chat to the website nominated all the books that I could think of that I enjoyed by black authors and indigenous authors this year. Um, I don't think I read any other books. I didn't realize actually, I didn't realize that uh, the, I can't think of the name of it now, but The School for Good and Evil, I didn't realize that, that book was written by an author of color. However, I haven't read any of the 2020 books and I've been reading those slowly to my daughter and we've taken a break and started reading something else so we would not have even gotten close to uh, uh, her books that her, he or she I don't even know if it's a, a woman but uh, I'm going to read about their about um, from their actual page and talk about the, the, the designers of this site and the, these awards and then I will answer the tags. The Shaded Choice Awards was created to celebrate new releases in 2020 from black and POC authors. No more asking for a seat when we can make our own table with our stories. It started with a shaded tweet from Princess and now here we are with the first Shaded Choice Awards. So I think that's, I think that's great. Princess from Castle Library, Jasmine from Pardon My Imagination and uh, Ashley J. Reads um, is the, they are all the designers of this website and the creator of these, of this tag and of these awards. Okay, now to the tag. Number one, a new black or person of color author that you read this year. I am ashamed to say that it is Tanana Reeve Du. She has written many books. She's been a writer for a very long time and I have just found out about her. Um, I've really been enjoying horror specifically. I've always loved mystery and thrillers, suspense, but specifically black horror is something that's new on my radar because of how ingenious uh, writers, TV show runners, um, you know, authors, Jordan Peele, all these people are using race, uh, horror, and uh, to, and not even just black people actually, because I read the Southern Vampire, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, such a mouthful, but they use horror to talk about race and all the other underlying issues in America. And I just love all the layers. It's amazing. Um, and so one of the shows that I was just really loving that had all those layers was Lovecraft Country. It had so many twisty layers and from the very beginning, the fact that they used Lovecraft for, for a black horror show was so crazy to me because Lovecraft was such a virulent racist. And for the heroes of this show to be black people was great. And uh, it was an HBO show and there was a official HBO um, podcast afterwards where they talked to one of the writers in the writing room, um, an another writer from, you know, outside of the show who was like, just hosting the podcast. And they would talk to sometimes stars on the show and other horror writers. And one of the people were Tanana Breve Do. And so, uh, you know, they said she was a horror author. She loved horror. So I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I wrote down her name. I wanted to look her up. And then <clears throat> when I got the Shudder, I, I got a free trial to Shudder, which is a horror, um, streaming service for October, I wanted to watch some scary stuff in October, there was a documentary called Horror Noir that she hosted on there. And so I was like, okay, I have to read Tanana Reeve Do. She's everywhere right now. So I read My Soul to Keep. It was from 1998. I believe it was her sophomore effort. Um, it was okay. It was a little, it was about, uh, it was about a immortal who fell in love with a mortal and he did all these weird things to try to keep his secret because he really wasn't supposed to be 
having a family and doing, you know, falling in love. It was against his little cult's rules because of the issues that he came up with. And it just kind of felt a little, it's not as warm as I like. I don't know how to explain that. And I'm gonna have to try to explain that when I talk about uh, the book that I'm reading now. It was her 2020 book called The Good House. And this book is like Stephen King with warm caramel and chocolate over it. I don't know what that means, but that's what it is. It's Stephen King with warm fudge, chocolate, caramel on it. Okay, number two was a debut book that you read. Um, that would be Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Uh, uh, that was a really good book. Uh, I think it got like a three um, on Book Read. I should have written that down. But um, sh it was uh, a really good book in regards to how we have to deal with we, meaning black people, and I'm assuming other people of color, the microaggressions we have to deal with with good white people, even when we have to deal with liberal white people or white people that are supposed to be our friends, these are some of the microaggressions that we still have to deal with. Um, I think she um, dates a white guy and her employer is a good white person and there's just the whole, whole way through, I mean, she deals with outright, outright racism, from like the police but then she has to deal with it in other areas as well and uh, I liked that she dealt with it the way I think I deal with things where you you want to have you want to be instantly well spoken and give someone you know a, a tongue lashing uh, well, well thought out race theoried you know, tongue lashing, but most of the time you just kind of sit there and take it. And this young woman did it in this book. I, I really enjoyed this book. Number three is a 2020 release that you haven't read yet. Um, that's Conjure Woman for me by Afia Atacora. I really hope that's right. And I have it. Uh, I have it as a um, audio book. Um, so it's on my TBR, but I just, I haven't read it yet. But I love anything that has to do with witches. Uh, so, I, you know, that, that got, I, it came from someone's book recommendation. And Conjure Woman sounds like a witch. So I'm going to read it <laughs> eventually. I'm cheating with number four a little bit. A fave author that released a new book this year. Talia Hibbert is now a fave author author of mine from the books that I've read of her this year. I read, uh, what is it, Get a Life, Chloe Bat Brown was the one from earlier, and then the book this year was Take a Hint, Danny Brown. It's the Brown Sisters series. I love these books. They're romance, um, they're people, of, they're black women, they are plus sized. They um, are married interracially, as I am. They have um, mental illness, they have physical illness. I am seen on the pages of these books and they are women who are vivacious and full of life and full of just, it, it's, I love these stories. Um, I, I absolutely love them. So. Yeah, so she's new, she's a favorite author of mine now after reading books of hers this year. Number five is what's your favorite genre and what book would you vote to win in that genre? For me, my favorite genre is mystery and thriller, mystery thriller suspense. I actually read something somewhere that separates all of those and it's very slight differences, but there they are a difference. But I like mystery thriller suspense and I really like when paranormal is mixed into those and romance is mixed into, but it, you know, if that is at the top, you can mix anything else underneath and I love it. So When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole was is the one I hope wins this year of the thrillers that I have read. Number six is what is your favorite book release from 2020 by a black or person of color author? And that would be Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I gave that book five stars. I loved it. I loved the mix of you know, bloodlines and academia and 
um, Arthurian legend and all of that with a black woman in the middle of it all. Number seven is who is a black slash POC author slash book that deserves more recogni recognition? I would say Barbara Neely. I love um, Cozy Mysteries. Uh, it's another junk food book for me. It's something I put on um, when I want something a little more light even than the murder thriller stuff, you know. I mean, if, if something really bad in real life news has happened, maybe listening to someone be killed is not the thing to do. And so a nice, but even, I, but I still like murder mysteries. <laughs> It's crazy, but you know, a cozy mystery that focuses more on romance or a witchy little town with the tea shop and stuff like that, that I love those. And I actually recently found a black cozy mystery writer. Um, I only read the first book. Um, her name is, uh, again, the author is Barbara Neely, K-N-E-E-L-Y. Blanche on the Lamb is a book, L-A-M. She was on the run from the law. And uh, number eight is what's a book you recommend that you don't directly identify with that's still POC? And that would be The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones or Stephen Graham Jones. Uh, it's It was a good book. It was a scary book. I actually did not realize that um, the guy who wrote it was actually Native American. I thought that I, I thought I thought it was someone else, but when I found out he was a person of color, I was like, oh great, because that book was really good. It was creepy. Um, it had the creepy vibes that you want in October, and that's when I read it. Uh, and number nine is weird for me because I am such a newbie, and I. But you know, who am I recommending? And to whom am I recommending these books, these content cre creators? So I'll just say the content creators that I like and who inspire me. Um, and uh, the black, so number nine was black POC content creator recommendations. And I would first say uh, Princess at Castle Library. This is who I found out from. I watch her videos. I like her personality. Um, I don't even read the same books as she reads, but I just like her personality. I like her Instagram. She's real raw and real. <clears throat> I like her dog. She's, you know, her, her she's in an interracial relationship, but she's like me. She's real outspoken on black issues. Um, I just like her personality, her vibe. Um, Starla Reads is another person that I really like. I actually find that I, I re she's one of the very few booktubers, and this is going to sound crazy, but I like booktubers because I just like listening to people talk about books and, and some people have a lot of um, ambiance to their stuff and so um, you know there's a couple white YouTuber uh, booktubers that I watch who have really aesthetic um, book book vlogs and things like that so I like them for that or vibes but Starla I specifically read probably 75% of the things that she recommends. I'm just not a big manga reader and I think that's the only thing that I don't read that she recommends or categories that she reads. I really like her and I like her personality too. Bow ties and books. I like them. Mina Reads is the most adorable person. I think she is funny. She is um, spicy. I don't know what the right, right word for it is. She's got a little, little tood and I love it. I love um I love her little sayings. Um, she talks like the internet, you know, like she said, we love it, we love that for us. And she said, yeah, the one I watched today, oh, and she had a really nice aesthetic video that she put out today where she went uh, book shopping. I like the music from that. Um, and I think she said, I, she said that was good for me and my homegirls. And so I, I know all her little references because I love, you know, internet stuff but um i'm old so I, I would probably sound crazy but i recognize it when i hear other people saying it so she's like that and like she reads almost totally romance i think and um so i just like watching her because i think she's absolutely adorable and she's funny mayona reads i like her little attitude uh, she's such a good she's so pretty um i like i like her channel i like the plants i like i like the presentation of it all and I like read with Cindy. Um, she is creative with her, with her um, output. Um, she's funny. Um, and then 
she's not a, specifically a booktuber, but she talks about books sometimes. She um, also has Audible as a sponsor, and she will, uh, and so, and she's also a black content creator that I absolutely love. And it's Evelyn from the Internet. She is funny. She is. Um, she's she, the main thing is she's hilarious, um, and then she's inspiring. Um, she's uplifting. She's relatable. And so those are my favorite people of color on these here YouTubes. I hope you enjoyed this tag. Um, I hope you do it. And um, I can't wait to see where these awards go. Uh, I think it's such a great idea. And uh, I, I'm, I'm really amazed and proud of these girls because anybody can sit around and come up with an idea. Anybody can sit around and complain but they they saw uh, an, a spot they saw a, a need and they filled it they had an idea and they followed through with it and that's great because I never do that <laughs> so thank you for watching my video if you watched all the way through and I will see you the next video bye